Hey, what's going on? I'm Brian Summers, photographer and content creator. And if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. If it's your second time here, then you know what to do. Run up those likes, hit subscribe, hit that bell for alerts for my videos like this, and stay tuned, because I'll be right back after a short message from SumsBrand.com. This channel is supported by SumsBrand.com. We love the likes, but the merch helps to keep the content coming. Visit Sums Brand for original art, graphic tees, and more. And use the code SUMS for 10% off. Today's video is about how I catalog my Polaroids. After I scan them, or sometimes before, I'll write what the image is, who it is, when I shot it, and then I'll tuck it away eventually in a photo album. When I first started racking up on Polaroids, I was storing them in a repurposed card box, something that you might get from like a Hallmark store or Papyrus. It didn't have a top, but it was just the right size for me to put the images in. Eventually that filled up and I needed to find more storage space. I eventually found, I found these boxes, which were kind of cool and they hold about 40 images, but the, the material is kind of, it's kind of flimsy. And as you can see, just, you know, yeah, it's just not it. But these worked for a while just to keep the dust off. Then I found this sturdier option. Same company Polaroid, same purpose of box to store 40 images. This is sturdier. It's a little more airtight than the last one. As you can see, the last one just, I'd much prefer these. So, I bought like two of these, bought like five of these. But sometimes I couldn't get these in time or I couldn't find them online. So I'd have to repurpose an old film box. And as you can see, when I'm done with it, I'll stick a label on it or write something on the box to let me know what's actually in it. I could actually store about 16 photos, so about two packs in one box. And those started to rack up. And then I realized that I could repurpose an empty film cartridge into storage device as well. This probably holds, you know, I could squeeze probably 16 in here, but you know, then you're dealing with possibly damaging your photos, but it's possible. You can stuff some images in this old cartridge. All of that's cool, but none of that compares to an actual album. First album I actually got was this pocket size album. And something like this is cool because you can take it around Put it in your pocket depending on you know what kind of pockets you have but it's pretty much pocket size you can travel with it put it in your purse your book bag big coat season you can walk around with this and show it as your portfolio polaroids are cool but they're also unique and people might have issues trusting if you'll get that right shot so if you have this little small portfolio on you you can go around and say well look this is things that i do this is the type of images that i want to capture do you mind if i get a shot of you and they could flip through that and make their decision. If that small one is too small for you, again, this holds about 40 images. This is 40 images, 40 images, 40 images. But the album, the actual album holds about 160, I believe. Let me check the box. The album holds about 160 photos. So you can go today and put a whole, a whole portfolio in here You do the math, it's about eight images in a pack. 160 images can be held in here. Should be simple math, right? I showed you how I store them and how I prefer to store them in the albums. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Polaroid. I just use a lot of the products. But before they hit the sleeves, it's probably best that you label and catalog your images just in case you mix and match your images when you curate your album the way that you see best fit. That way you can go about laying out your book without forgetting when or where you shot those images. I'm often going back in my albums and pulling photos and if I didn't label them accordingly, they'd be all mixed up like a deck of cards. So today I'm gonna to show you how I label, catalog, and curate my Polaroids. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way and I'll show you how I go through my process. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get out writing utensil. You can use a Sharpie or a pen. I prefer to use a Sharpie. Um, an ultra fine point does the trick. 
Um, it is that like felt tip, so it will bleed if you hold it too long. So be sure to, you know, write efficiently. Uh, don't be scared to press down on the back of the, the image because all the chemistry that was in this image before was down here. After it was taken, it was pushed out. And this image is old, so um, I can write on it comfortably. Um, but if it's a fresh, a fresh image and you write on it, still be careful with squeezing the bottom because it might have uh, some, some chemicals in there still and it might kind of push up in your image. But other than that, you can just write your uh, labels right on the bottom. Or you could use these same stickers to put on the back of your Polaroid. As you can see, they're about the same width and size, so you can put a sticker on the back if you don't feel like writing directly on your image. But as you can see, I've already labeled this. This was something that I was given as an option when I was out in the street. I just put my own at the back of it so they could find me. And then I got their information. But let's see if I label any of these. Okay, so the rest of these aren't labeled. This was just one from this random day last year in May. So, and then also if you, if you deconstruct a old film cartridge, you'll get a white card like this in the back. I often use this to write on it as well. So if you, if this was the, the last place that your images were gonna go, you can just stuff them in here. You have that black card that ejects with your images that you can put in there to separate images. I, I like this little tab that stays on it. But this white card could go right in front and there you go. You can write, hey, this is me out in Soho or whatever the topic is or genre that you shop. So I'm gonna go through these, show you real quick. Image of me, it's the homie Josh, right? So let's go ahead and label these images. Or I'll, just, I'll just label one so you can see. But these are images that I needed to put away for a long time. So this is all on the same day, May 25th. That's the only way I know what date this was. Again, label your images. Um, and we were out in Midtown, just walking around. So I'm gonna write in the back of this, make sure my surface is clean, cause I don't wanna scratch up the front. Like I said, this was May 25th. The only way I know that is because this image was labeled. So I'm gonna write, this is, in this image is the homie Josh, and it was shot May 25th, and it's in Midtown. So I'm gonna write that information on the back. That's how I would label and put it in here and then put it away. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna take it and put it in an album. These are already full, so I'm gonna open up a new one today. I've got a mini album and I got a couple of these albums, so I'm just gonna open this up. And already I noticed that they made the spine bigger since making this original one, or the one that I bought originally. The spine is a little bigger. And I think that's good because you can see it kind of accordions out once it gets pretty big. This one actually, the spine, or this detached from the spine and I had to get some super glue to fix it, but that's another story. This is what we have today. Let's get this out the way. 40 images. Fresh pages. Let's get started. Dojo sessions. This actually might be 40 images. And I oh, didn't even label those. Dojo sessions might be a book by itself. This is, this is all family, family. Yeah, this is all Christmas and family. I'll do that another day. The images that I keep in these boxes are kind of old. They're like the older ones. So, oh, this was one I think I wanted to go in. As you can see, this is a double box, so they hold a lot more. Oh yeah, family, family. Harlem. Let's do that one. This is out in the city. 
how the city is going. So, got a decent amount of images over here. So once you've collected your images, you've chosen your theme of how you want to lay out your album. Again, you only have 40 images that you can use in this small book. So you might want to choose the best of or some type of theme. The images that I've chosen so far have been images of similar people, um, us all being in New York City, or something about New York or Midtown. They kind of have that theme. So Harlem to Midtown is like the area range. Uh, the date is the same, date range rather, all shot last year. This one actually is a project that might go somewhere else. Let's get started. So we got our album. One thing about the mini album is that it starts with one image and it ends with one image. But throughout the booklet, there are two image spreads. Um, it seems to be also a little slot right here. You can probably put something here if you want to, maybe like a little um, sheet of paper can fit in here that you can label if you want to. Um, but I always want to choose which is going to be the cover image in that and then go into the spread. I'm going to start with these images. And most of these are of the guy, Kyle, and I got a one-off, which is one of my favorite images, this Corvette. That's going to be the cover. So open this up. And again, you should have labeled your images by now gonna hold you. I might not have labeled all of these. Alright, boom. That's it. So that's my cover. That's how I know that there was about Harlem. So then I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go into the buildings. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Gotta get it on the right angle. Yeah, my technique right now is trash. But it's in there, so got a spread. So he was blowing smoke in these, but I only actually captured the smoke in two of them. So I'll start it before he actually got to the smoke. And my logic in putting this on the left side is that I'm looking at the right side first. The left side is cool, but the right side actually has the action. This could be the clouds that he's actually blowing on <laughs> or the actual clouds in the sky. So that's, you know, that theme of that pack so far. Started with the vet, buildings, Kyle, smoke, clouds. We got a couple more spreads to go. And like I said, this book is good to carry around. So when you're choosing your 40 images, you might want to be more selectful and find like the best of the best. Again, this is where the labeling comes in handy. If you only want to pick two from a pack that you use, you label the whole pack. So all eight of these images are from the same day or from the same shoot. But let's say you only want to use two of those images. You put those two in your best of album and have your other six in a box or in a larger Polaroid album. So that's one pack. So this is a day with the homie Danny. All right, so got three of Danny and I got four other random images just from being out that day. Again, got the cloud. I want to transition into something cool. What's a good segue going from the cloud? You just looked up. Now we're going to look down. Maybe we see, maybe we see pigeons. That way we know we're still in New York. segue right into this one here. He's already under the awning, under the, the walkway. 
going in further down the walkway. Who knows what's down there? Let's go on a little journey. Flip the page and get to the hoop bus. All right, and you can see the book is filling out a little more. Some more New York stuff. I got those two trains. I got these two right here. I got these two neons. Decisions, decisions. So we got a few more pages left. I'm gonna go ahead and go through these. Got Harlem to Midtown, Motion, Train. And I would just continue to fill this up with images that fit this theme. So I'm gonna go back in here and look for some more New York stuff. I actually might put those images of Josh in here. So, boom. Midtown photo walk. This is all Midtown. It makes sense. Midtown. Josh, 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 Josh. Me. Guy on the street. Now, I like all these shots of Josh, but I'm only gonna put four in here. Um, taking this one out, I like the shadows, but the facial expression might not be flattering, so I'm gonna put that to the side. Got a couple of randoms here. Let's see if any of these fit. Got a train, pigeon. I think they actually do fit. So now we're outside, hiking. I like this as a last image. We can go from Harlem with the Corvette, the blowing clouds, to the pigeons, finding some hoops, traveling, traveling, see another homie, the shadows. And now we go into the woods. Kind of telling the story, right? 11 more images we need. Who knew it could get stressful curating the album? A small album. The cool thing about the large album is that when you open it up, it's eight images on a spread, so you can put a whole pack on there. The issue comes in when you start to pull up with images and mix and match, or you might have like one or two bad shots per pack. You just have a blank spot in that album, or you can just put those trash images in there with it too. Um, sometimes I do it just to place hold, um, but it's up to you. Now, the whole goal was for me to take some of these images and put them in here. But let me just cheat a little bit and see what I have in this one. Because maybe it makes more sense in this small album. As you can see, these all, this is all from the same day. Same vibe. Same vibe. All of these kind of are stuck to this thing, so I'm not gonna take any of these out. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I keep those trash images in there with the rest of the pack just to hold that place. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep these in here. Revisit some images that I kept saying I'm not gonna put in here. And I'll end it, just end it on the train. So now we got one full album. We're going from Harlem, Kyle, Blown Clouds, New York Pigeons, Danny, Hoop Bus, Danny right here in the shadows actually moving, motion, J 
Josh in Midtown, still in the city. Now we hop over to Jersey, go to the woods. We got the homie crack. Out hiking. Playing while he's hiking. Then we transition while we're still in Jersey to downtown New Jersey, downtown Newark actually. Double exposures. Folks in the street. Chuck, homie from Twitter. Chuck's dad. And that's how you curate an album. Now, if you have a lot of images of one thing, maybe the big album is your best option. As you saw, I got a lot of family images, so maybe I need to put all of those in the large albums. It might take me about three of them to do that. I got three up here. But if you want something to carry around, like a quick portfolio, look at that 40 image uh, album. It's way easier to keep them in here than it is to keep them in a torn box or even the actual storage box that Polaroid made. Like these boxes look cool, but are they really cool to carry around and show somebody? I guess if you want to get to the Lucy's quick, yeah. But if you want to have something in the album, possibly tell a story, curate it for the viewing pleasure, small album or a large album. A coffee table book and a large album are about the same size. So if you would keep something like this on your table, you can also keep your own album there. And when it comes to the size, and portability the small book is great to put in your pocket or pocket book or a small bag the large album can fit in a book bag maybe a canvas bag but it's gonna take up a lot more space so consider where you're going where you want this book to end who's gonna be looking at it all these things come in mind when it comes to choosing the type of album that you curate however you decide to curate your own album Remember to label and catalog your images. So years from now, when they're celebrating you in a museum exhibit, don't know who to credit. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you loved it, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell for alerts on more videos like this. Don't forget to join the Discord channel. I would love to see how you label, catalog, and curate your own albums. And maybe I'll find a new way to label my own images. Don't forget to check out sumsbrand.com for tees, art, and all things merch. And follow me at Brian Summers and Summers Never Over on Instagram. Until the next one, peace.